The concept of time is baffling to me. A day can seem totally insignificant in the grand scheme of life, but whilst you're living it, it's all consuming. Days and weeks can seemingly fly by, but individual moments can feel significantly longer. And with each day, we can choose to put ourselves and our needs first. Every day though, that's a lot of time. I already feel like I'm trying to squeeze so much into an already too short day that it's way easier if I just put stuff that I wanna do on the weekends or on holidays. But whether I like it or not, our lives are made up of each of these individual days. I wanna be happy on a daily basis. I don't wanna to have to wait for the weekend or a holiday to finally feel like I have time for myself or to do what makes me feel alive. I wanna be regularly filling my cup so I can show up for myself and for others. So here are some things that I do on a regular basis to take care of every aspect of my being. And whilst I may not do these things every day, I consciously make an effort to do them as much as possible. To begin, I don't check my phone as soon as I wake up in the morning. A few months ago, I realized how much I loved the first thing that I saw when I woke up to be the outside. And that was when the days were getting lighter, it was coming into summer, it was lovely. And even though now it's taking longer for the sun to come up in the morning so I'm waking up in the dark, I still love to see the outside before I see a screen. This technique also helps me just get out of bed first thing in the morning so I don't have that inclination to just start scrolling on my phone in bed. I try to exercise on a daily basis. I'm currently swimming every morning so that means I'm waking up at five and I'm just moving as the first part of my day. I always feel, I think I'm always reminded that when I do make an effort to go out and move that we are made to move and I think we reap the benefits from it when we do. I love starting my day off with exercise because it puts me in a really good mood. I get to go and see really great people. It wakes my body up and helps me feel more connected and present with my body. Following my swim, I practice yoga every morning. Just a quick 20 minute little flow. And I have already spoken about the tremendous benefits and why I love yoga and continue to practice so regularly. And I'll link that video down below if you're interested. But basically it just clears my mind and helps me really set up for the day ahead. So it helps me wind down and feel rejuvenated if I'm tired after training or anything in the morning. But then it really helps to center me and prep me for the day ahead. I always finish with some gratitude as well where I just take a moment to look back on the past 24 hours, what I'm grateful for, the little things, and then moving forward, what I have to be grateful for in the day ahead. So. For me, yoga is a full body practice taking care of my physical, mental, emotional and spiritual well-being. Cannot recommend it enough. As I've gotten a bit older, something that I've really realised I value is good quality food. I look forward to going to the markets early on a Sunday morning every week and then for the rest of the week I look forward to opening my fridge and being able to choose between incredible produce that I am privileged enough to have. I get excited about the food I get to eat and I'm at the point of my life where I am eating for enjoyment, nourishment and fuel. When I'm creating a meal, big or small, the first thing I think about is what do I feel like right now? What do I want to eat? I'll then see what's available to me and check if my meal is balanced. So say I'm craving scrambled eggs on a bagel. I'll add some fresh tomatoes and salad to that, as well as some avocado for healthy fats and maybe some cooked kale for extra iron. I also really listen to my hunger cues and if I have just finished what is quite a big meal and I'm still hungry, I'll eat more. Or if throughout the day I need some snacks, I'll eat them. I know that especially when I'm exercising, I need to fuel my body to replenish what it's lost and to sustain it for the future. 
And then when I sit down for the meal, I am present for at least the first few bites. I try to avoid any screens around my meals. I prefer a book or talking to my housemates, but no matter what, the first few bites of my meal is just me savoring the taste and all the different textures going on in my mouth. And I'm just really grateful for everything on my plate. Throughout the day, I set technological boundaries for myself. I know I have the tendency to become addicted to my phone, computer, or social media. So now that I'm aware of that, I can move forward and put some systems in place to ensure that I'm happy. Because when I am spending too much time on any of those things, I feel like shit. The whole balance of my life feels out because when I am using them in a negative way like that, I'm either procrastinating and therefore feel stressed and annoyed at myself because I haven't completed the task that I obviously need to do, or I am spending my free time these ways, which is not how I wanna spend my free time. Sure, some people might like to, and that's fine, but I know myself, that's not what I wanna do which is why I don't have technology over meals. I will never use it in bed. I have it on airplane overnight. I don't check it until after training each morning and I really try and limit it throughout the day. And how I know I don't like spending my time this way is I actually find that on my weekends or holidays, I barely touch my phone or computer because there are so many other things that I value more so many things that I find more enjoyment out of. So that is just something that I know makes me happy that I need to kind of consciously be mindful of. Sleep is something that I have always struggled with, mostly because I feel like I come alive at night. I think I'm a bit naturally more of a night owl, even though I feel better within myself when I wake up early in the mornings. But also because if I've had a busy, stressful, full on day, I just want time to unwind and relax at night, which often means I'll stay up more than I probably should. But I have finally admitted to myself that sleep is far more effective for me to reset and recharge than watching a few extra episodes of New Girl. So I have accepted that I need at least eight hours sleep per night, which means I'm getting into bed for about 8.45 p.m., which I know sounds really early, but it's one of those things where I'm getting up at five, I know I need that amount of sleep, and it's kind of way, well, it is way easier when you've made it into a habit. So now it gets to like 7.30 at night, and I'm really tired, so it's actually not difficult to get to bed that early on the regular anymore. But then of course, I have also experienced those times where I've gone to bed too late, had to wake up for five and have just regretted every bit of it. I haven't felt good in any aspect of my life for the next day and therefore I'm just not happy, am I? So sleep, huge priority. Sunlight is a complete game changer for me. When I am in a room filled with natural light, I am so happy, my mood is I can't even explain it. I'm so lucky that in this new home, our room is filled with natural light in the morning. It's beautiful and I'm really lucky that I swim in an outside pool so I get some sunlight every morning before it gets too hot. But if I haven't swum that morning or if I'm just craving some sun on my skin, I'll make the effort to go out and just get some sunlight for 10 minutes and I seriously notice the difference. It is, it, it really, it's in those times where it really feels like a proper energy source, which it is. It's really cool. I know I'm a people pleaser, but when I speak up and am honest with the people around me, especially the people who are really important to me, I feel really good and I feel like I am showing up for myself. I've been trying to do this more it is not always easy and I definitely fail at it sometimes, but I know it is really important for me to work on. And this is not just the negative or disagreements in life, it's also for the wonderful things, the good stuff, telling people how much they mean to me or how they make me feel. Not being afraid to show emotion, whatever that may be. I am also a hardcore saver. 
For many years, I would be scared of spending money, especially on myself, and even more so for things that weren't necessities. I was terrified of my bank account going down. But thankfully, I have realized that it's okay to spend money on things that make you happy or things that you do need or things that really add value to your life. And that is ridiculously freeing. I also have found that I really like spending money on other people. That's something that makes me really, really happy. But of course, in saying this, saving money also really makes me happy and brings me fulfillment. I can get really stressed about it. So making conscious financial decisions is a huge service to my mental health. When I have downtime or I'm carving out time for myself, I try and do really mindful activities or things that I know I really enjoy. So while it might take a little bit of effort to set up and pack down some painting, that brings me a lot more fulfillment and happiness and enjoyment and rejuvenation versus just sitting down to watch some TV or even read a book sometimes. I have also recently been going on bike rides on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon just to get outside and really enjoy the weather. And finally, I really try to make time for the things that are deeply important to me. Since I've moved out, I've been going to my parents' house once a week for dinners, which has been so lovely because I get to see them and see the animals. I get to enjoy mum's cooking again and just catch up with all of them. It's something I really value and I have no problem making time for. I've also been trying to get to the beach more this season. For the past few years, at the end of every summer, I would look back to myself and say, I did not get to the beach as much as I wanted to. Where did summer go? So coming into this summer, I thought, no, nah, that's it. I'm doing this for myself. And for the past few months, I've gotten to the beach at least every two weeks, sometimes every week. And I have been reaping the rewards. My mental health has been so excited for the beach days. It's worth the effort of getting up early and driving and the time spent it's just time well spent. And that is how I see any activity that makes you feel happy and that you look forward to. So obviously everything that I've spoken about in this video is very specific to me and my life and where I am in my life. I acknowledge that everyone is different and everyone leads really different lives. But I think that there are things that everyone could pick from my video that maybe you resonate with, or maybe you want to explore more. So I encourage you right now to just take a quick minute to jot down what are the things in your life that you know make you really happy. Everything and anything you can think of. And have a think as to whether there are any aspects of your life that you'd feel more happy about or that would make you more happy if they were adjusted slightly. Maybe you need more sleep. Maybe you need to be more open with your emotions with the people dearest to you. Maybe you would really like to get out into the sun more or to exercise more. I'd love to know your thoughts on this, so if you feel comfortable, please leave a comment below. How we spend our days is ultimately how we spend our lives. Taking the time to think about this is truly worth it. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.